Hey y'all, welcome back to another vlog. I'm behind time y'all, it's July 3rd. <laughs> it is July 3rd and I still haven't testified for May. So that is what this video is gonna be all about. I'm in a new location as y'all can see. Don't mind any background noise that y'all hear. Jordan is also recording content and doing all the things. So hopefully he won't interrupt my testimony from May. But y'all, I can't even halfway remember everything that happened in May. So I'm kind of excited to kind of read through all of my daily journals and just like refresh my memory on everything that God did. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, but real quick, I do apologize for the lighting. Um, I do not have my ring light and Jordan is using his so y'all get it y'all y'all get it but anyway let's officially start with may 1st because it's july 3rd like i said and so many great and amazing things have happened first of all in june so i cannot wait until the june testimonial video but also may like 2024 has definitely been like the year so far i'm so like at peace mentally spiritually um, physically, I've been working out, I've been doing all the things, trying to eat right. So it's just been a lot of greatness going on in 2024. So I'm thankful to be back for another testimonial video. So like I said, without further ado, let's hop into May 1st. May 1st, of course, was the first day of May. Also the first day of the increased fast. As y'all know, we do um, fasting from the 1st to the 5th at the top of every month so this is a part of that as well and um, it was a great day I was going through the motions with my allergies and I had recently started using Zyrtec so this day we well I actually went out running in the evening so I had a full day we fasted of course and then that evening I went for a run and it felt so good to be able to be outside and breathing breathing properly so Zyrtec has been like I was saying in the last testimonial video a game changer for me and I'm so thankful for it so on day two May 2nd we continued our fast and I went for another run and my allergies were quite all right but interestingly enough and y'all will learn more about um y'all will get more context to the story in the june testimonial but interestingly enough a stylist reached out to me by the name of sarah and she asked if i was interested in being a part of her virtual summit and i was excited she sent a long very thorough email that y'all i'm gonna be honest with you i did not read the entire email who would read all of that um but at the end of that email she um asked what my availability was and we basically just scheduled a follow-up call to um, connect about the summit and make sure that it was the right opportunity for me. So I was excited to be a part. I was excited to share my expertise as I always am. But when we got on the call, she asked me some questions. And one of the questions was, you know, how many subscribers do you have? How many email subscribers do you have? So a lot of people, um, when it comes to like virtual events, they bring other people on and I've experienced this before, but they bring other people on and they have a certain criteria that they expect the people that they're bringing on to have. So her specific criteria was 4,000 emailing subscribers. Now, I've been in business for about 10 years I would say I started building my emailing list. Honestly, I don't even remember. Maybe 2016, 2017-ish, I started building an emailing list. But over time, people unsubscribe. Over time, I delete subscribers because I go through my list and I basically cleanse it of the people who aren't opening or who aren't really responding to my emails. So like currently right now, I probably have less than a thousand subscribers, which I'm not mad at, which is funny because I used to get upset when people unsubscribe from my emailing list or wanted to be removed. But as I got older and matured, I no longer cared. And I realized that those people either weren't my client or just weren't meant to receive what I was putting out, which is fine. So when she mentioned that the criteria was for me to have 4,000 subscribers, email subscribers, and I told her I did not, she was like, oh, okay, well, you won't be able to be a part of this summit. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever. So I was a little irritated because she did actually put that in the email when she initially reached out. But like I said, that email was long and drawn out, y'all. I was not reading the whole thing. So I was a little irritated that one, I kind of wasted my time. Two, I kind of wasted hers. And three, like, girl, who the hell cares how many email subscribers I have? Like, as long as I can make an impact with the words that are coming out of my mouth and, you know, really transforming people's lives with the information that I have, who the cares about how many subscribers I have on my emailing list but I digress I digress because okay in my journal entry I said God it's okay like I know that you will set me up for success and provide me with another opportunity where none of that stuff even matters and y'all I'm not gonna say too too much but on July 11th I will be speaking on a virtual summit with other stylists and fashion experts speaking to over a thousand women about style and really transforming their executive presence. And she didn't ask me, this other woman who I will be speaking with on her summit, she didn't ask me how many subscribers I had. She didn't ask me any of that. And also she's black. So it's just like, I would prefer to work with a black woman doing something like this who just doesn't really care about stuff like that. So I say all that to say, opportunities will come your way that you are excited to partake in and excited to be a part and excited to say yes. And then it probably or may not end up working out in your favor. But don't get discouraged because God, as I said, will always provide you with another opportunity that's bigger and better. So thanks Sarah <laughs> for not putting me on your panel of uh, stylists for your summit. Um, because I got a bigger and better opportunity and I'm super excited to share with that audience as well. So moving on, <laughs> moving on to May 3rd. So May 3rd, y'all, I had a session, a one-on-one -on -one session with Raven. So by this point in time, you should kind of already know who Raven is. And if not, I'll reiterate. So Raven is the founder of Increase 365, which is the group that I'm in of female women entrepreneurs, professionals, um, women of God. And um, she gave us the opportunity to, or gave some of us, some of us the opportunity to um, have one-on-one -on -one sessions with her. I think it was for those of us who were a part of one of her programs outside of Increase 365. So I had a one-on-one -on -one session with her and Raven is a prophetess y'all. So she prophesied a lot of great things about me as she always does. Um, of course I took notes, I wrote things down and really received everything that she said. We even went over time because we were just talking about everything. But it just gave me a different perspective on like why I'm in the position that I'm in. Um, as far as like being a business owner, um, still living at home, um, not really having my own home yet. Well, not really, but not owning my own home yet because I'm not. Um, and just certain things that I've been asking for and praying for, she kind of reiterated um, a lot of things that she's prophesied it on me before, but also gave me a different perspective as to why I'm at this point in my life right now and, you know, why things haven't happened yet. So it just was refreshing and I'm thankful for her insight. Um, and it just made me feel better about my situation. Although I've gotten to a point where I've kind of been okay with my situation as far as not having my own home just yet um, and still living at home with my parents. But there are certain times and points where I'm like, oh, this is annoying. <laughs> this is frustrating. Like I'm ready to move. But other times I'm like, okay, I'm thankful that I'm home still because I'm able to continue paying off my student loan debt, my credit card debt, um, saving, investing, and just mentally preparing myself for being a homeowner. Um, and also, you know, getting my business to where it needs to be for me to successfully um, be a homeowner. So it was a great session. And also that day, I got some really great news. Um, or an opportunity was presented to me from my manager at my job that initially was part-time. But y'all know 2023, um, January of 2023, I got let go from my job at Rue La La. I applied for unemployment and basically was on unemployment from January all the way up into, I wanna say August of 2023. 
August is when my unemployment was ending, which I didn't even realize, but I wasn't afraid or I wasn't scared because literally that last week or the week before the last week that I got unemployment, I was offered a job, a part-time job at MM Lafleur. Absolutely love the job, love my coworkers. It's virtual, I don't have to go in anywhere. And it's styling, literally aligns with everything that I do in my business. I love the brand, I support the brand, I think the brand is great, and I love the clothing. But it was only part-time, so you know, I basically felt like I was working every day. Um, but because it was part-time, I didn't fully get an opportunity to um, get all the benefits that usually come with full-time jobs and or, you know, just all the accessibility that comes with being a full-time employee. But on this day, May 3rd, 2024, my manager offered me a full-time position. Now, when she initially offered it to me, I was like, mm, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to let you know. But after going to God and really like spending time with the idea, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> Why would I not take this full-time position? Like, what? What? So um, she gave me the weekend to think about it. I want to say May 3rd was probably like a Thursday or a Friday. I don't know. But she gave me the weekend to think about it. And I came back and said, yeah, I would love to transition to full-time. So honestly, I think I transitioned, I can't remember which day, but today is July 3rd. So it's at least been two months, um, if not almost two months that I've been full time and I've been loving it y'all. Not much has really changed as far as like, you know, my work and my availability or anything like that. I'm still able to work with my clients. I'm still able to do business stuff. I'm still able to just have time to travel and do all the things. And now my paychecks are a little bit more than what they were before. So I'm very thankful that I decided to, um, you know, make that leap into full-time employment. And I'm thankful because I'm able to fund my business. I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do before. And also I'm one step closer to being a homeowner because I'm able to put more money aside. I'm able to invest more money. I'm able to pay off more things. And it's just like all around the best thing. So very thankful for that. Very, very thankful. So moving on to May 4th. Okay, y'all. So on May 4th, um, I did my usual routine of journaling and reading my devotional. And for some reason on this day, um, I decided to write out the scripture Proverbs 4, 23. So I didn't actually write it out, but I wrote out the scripture. So um, I think it was just a scripture that stood out to me um, on this particular day. So I'm going to read what it says, the NLT version, Proverbs 4, 23. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. I'm also going to read the easy version. It says, be very careful to keep your mind safe. The thoughts that you think make you the person that you are. And for some reason, I just felt led to read that because I have been on a journey of shifting my mindset and really moving away from a lot of ne negative talk, negative self-talk, negative thinking. And I mean, obviously it comes up in my mind at times when I'm going through certain things or just going through certain situations, but I've made it a habit and have really learned to shift those thoughts into something a lot more positive. Um, and it has been very helpful to me. It has been very helpful to my well-being as a person, um, as a 30-year-old, uh, as a black woman, as a daughter, as a girlfriend, as a friend, as a sister, as an auntie, as a business owner. Um, it has been very helpful to me because being, because as a woman wearing so many hats, sometimes we feel like, or I feel like, I can only speak for myself, I feel like I have so much to do. Um, I have so many tasks to complete. I have so many people to please. I have so many like just a lot going on at one time and it can become very overwhelming. Um, and sometimes I tend to not give myself enough grace or 
make myself feel like I'm not doing enough and I don't ever want to feel like that because I'm always doing more than enough I'm like <laughs> y'all getting teary eyed but it's fine um but yeah like I never want to feel like that because I know that I'm more than enough I know God has given me everything that I need to be the person and be the woman that I was created to be and I have learned to just give myself grace if I'm tired take a nap um, I do a lot I work very very hard to to get here or to get here I've worked very very hard and I'm always a hard worker um, I'm in a space where I love working um, I enjoy working like work doesn't feel like work to me um so i really try to keep it that way because i never want to get tired of like doing what i love and sometimes if we're doing too much or if we're like overextending ourselves that love for what we do or that passion for what we love to do um can sometimes dwindle or like go away and I was in a space like that before where styling was not fun to me anymore. Um, and it was because I felt like I was working with the wrong people and I was doing it for the wrong reasons. But now, you know, I'm in a space where I'm very intentional about who I work with. I'm very intentional about setting boundaries when it comes to my business. Um, and now since I'm a full-time employee, like I also have other like tasks that I need to complete and do. So really managing my time better, um, getting an intern, which is something that I did in June. So y'all will hear about that in the June testimonial, but just really not being afraid to ask for help. I think that's the bottom line of all of this. Um, we cannot do everything. And although God gives us the strength to do many things, um, he also gives us the ability to ask for help when we need it. So I say all that to say, I have been working really hard on my mindset and really making sure that the only thing that I think about are, are good things. And if bad things creep up, I know how to tackle them and I know how to handle it the best way possible for myself. I hope that made sense and I hope that was helpful for those of you who are listening. But continuing on, on May 4th, um, I was preparing to travel. Um, me and Jordan were actually, were actually going to New York that weekend, I want to say, or that next week. So I wanted to make sure that I got, that I was getting everything done, done that I needed to get done. I'm looking at my journal, y'all. <laughs> so that's why I'm looking down. Um, but I wanted to make sure all my content was scheduled and planned and all that. Um, so it was a pretty productive day for me. I ended it ended the day by cooking and watching the TLC documentary. So if y'all have not seen the TLC documentary on Netflix, um, I want to say, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Maybe it's like Love TLC or something like that. Um, and I've seen like other documentaries I want to say about TLC, but I haven't seen this one in particular, which was really good how they creative directed it. So basically throughout the entire documentary, they were preparing for a concert or um, they were preparing for a performance. And at the end of the documentary, they performed. But throughout the documentary, as they were planning, um, as they were pre preparing for the performance, they were also tapping into like um, different like points in their lives and basically just telling their story. Um, of course, they talked about Left Eye. They talked about, um, you know, t Boss dealing with her illness, Chili be being pregnant or becoming pregnant and all the things. And it really just, I know in my journal I wrote, like it really just reminded me of how God will basically use, um, you know, what the enemy thought he could um how can I say it? What, what the enemy thought like he could take us out with, like our insecurities or um, just our like the things that we deal with throughout life and the situations that we go through. A lot of people are afraid and embarrassed about those things and they try to hide them or like put them on the back burner. But that specific <clears throat> documentary basically showed me how God can use those things that we're trying to hide or trying to cover up for good. Um, and it was just really motivational, really inspirational. Personally, I love TLC. Um, I grew up on TLC. And, um, you know, it's sad that it's only two of them left. But their career was so impactful. And the little bit of time that they were like, you know, a thing. 
and they literally have so much music that we are still playing and listening to today because of the impact that it made. The type of music that they made was so inspirational and so motivational to women specifically. And I think that's why they were so successful. Um, and just the love that they had for one another was just so genuine. Um, and I feel like you don't really see that too much nowadays in women's groups or in girl groups or just friends in general. Um, so I just love the energy that they gave off and I love how positive they were. Um, and I pray that they continue to um, live on the legacy, live live on the TLC legacy and just continue spreading positivity. That was basically it um, for May 4th. Okay, so on May 5th, I wanna say that was either a Friday or a Saturday, I'm not sure. But I was at Jordan's house, I'm sure, and I basically stayed in the entire day doing work. I wanna say I also was clocked into work as well. I wouldn't be surprised. But like I said, I was. we were planning to go to New York on the 12th, so that following weekend. So um, I, or actually, no, we left on the 9th and we came back on the 12th. I'll talk about it in here. But um, basically I stayed in and just prepped and planned and prepared for the week because I knew that we were going out of town. So I really just stayed in and worked. Um, I wanna say it rained too. So it made it a lot easier for me to um, wanna stay in and wanna get some work done. It was a pretty like boring day, but I did watch a really good sermon about sewing and it really gave me a different perspective on sewing and just encouraged me to give more. So in here I said, in order for me to be fruitful, I have to be seedful and that means I have to sow. It's a cycle that's never meant to stop and God only supplies and multiplies the seeds that I've sown. So I pray that God makes me a fearless sower and multiplies my fruit so that I can keep the cycle going. So I've talked about being a fearless sower in my testimonial videos before. So y'all already know where I'm going with this. But basically, you know, I was inspired to continue sowing and continue giving and not being afraid to give or not being afraid to sow or feeling like, oh, if I sow this amount, I won't have money enough to do this because God always supplies. So I'm always praying to for God to like change my motives and really change my heart when it comes to sowing and giving money. And not not feeling like okay if I spend if I send someone $25 or if I send someone $50 I then won't have it um, because I always have money I'll, I'm always fruitful I'm always um, prosperous so I, I definitely want to encourage you to um, if you're not a sower if you don't tithe to definitely do that um, because for me it just helps me to grow my faith because it really tests God like okay I'm gonna sell this $50 like because I know that you're gonna provide for me and it may not even be um, you know money back like I talked about this before I'm sure in other testimonial videos but just because you sold $50 doesn't mean you're gonna get $50 back you actually will get more back essentially but even if you don't get money back you may get presented with an opportunity you may get presented with a new client you may get presented with more favor in your life when it comes to certain things so definitely don't always feel like when you sow and when you tithe you're going to get money in return because that's not necessarily how it works and don't just sow and tithe just to get money in return because that's definitely not how it works you have to check your heart and check your your heart posture and know like okay i'm giving this because i want to give this not because i know i'm going to get something in return if that makes sense and i'm speaking from uh experience because that's literally how i used to be i'm like all right bet when i started sewing and got into sewing heavy i'm like all right bet i'm gonna sew this money i should i should get it back or I should get the same exact money back or tenfold back. I know that's what they say in the Bible. I don't know the specific um, verse, but I'm gonna try to find it and link it or, you know, put it below. But I used to think that. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna sell. And it's all right, cause I'm gonna get my money right back. And at times I didn't get money back, but I did get presented a new opportunity. Or maybe I got shouted out on someone's blog post or someone's YouTube video or someone's Instagram or um, maybe I was referred to something you know something of that nature like so definitely don't like put God in a box when it comes to sewing and being a fearless sewer um, 
So yeah, I hope you receive that and I hope that makes sense. I had to put April 6th. It's supposed to be May 6th. Oh, no pen. It's all right. So on May 6th, y'all, I met up with James Barger. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. But I actually, I want to say I talked about this in a previous testimonial, but I went to the Breakfast to Bagels networking event. Um, it was one that I was invited to by a woman by the name of Chandra, who I connected with on LinkedIn. She invited me to that um, networking event. It was super early in the morning. And I met quite a few women there that connected me with other people, which was really cool. One of the women I connected to was one of the only black women that I connected with, to be honest with you. And she was the last person I connected with. I felt like she was literally waiting for me to finish talking with this other woman before she came over. We were the last two people left in the space. And she was like, oh, just wanted to give you my card. I think you should connect with my colleague, James. He's also a stylist and I think you all would get along just great. So I connected with James. He actually immediately reached out to me on LinkedIn. I talked about this previously and we had a call. We literally talked for almost two hours and then we set up a coffee chat. So we met in person at Needs, which was beautiful because Needs is such a beautiful cafe and like space to eat and network and stuff and do work. So I was there, I got a really good coffee, a lavender coffee by the way, which I actually went to Needs today looking for that coffee and it, because it was seasonal, they didn't have it anymore. So I was a little <laughs> irritated. But other than that, met James there. We also talked for a very long time there. I absolutely love him. He's super Super cool very down to earth and he truly understands a lot of what I was saying when it comes to styling and just some of the frustrations that I have but I was able to connect with him thanks to Angela and um, it was just a really really great connection and I'm excited to like continue staying connected with him and also working together with him very soon but that same day, I also had a meeting with my manager and confirmed that I wanted to move forward in the full-time position. So she was excited, I was excited, and I'm just so thankful that I was able to have the wisdom to say yes. Um, although my pay doesn't change, um, the amount of hours I'm working is now consistently 40 hours and that means more money like i mentioned and also the benefits so it really just worked out in my favor um and i'm just so thankful to be at this job i recently traveled um for them to visit one of the stores one of the newer stores in philly which is another testimony i'll be talking about for the june testimonial vlog but other than that it was a great experience um doing that and it wouldn't have happened I would say if I wasn't a full-time stylist. So very thankful for that. Okay, so on May 7th, I officially had the meeting with my manager to confirm that I was moving full-time. Initially the day before, I think I just slacked her or like sent her, sent her an email. So that's when she scheduled our meeting. But I officially said yes to the full-time position on May 7th. And I transitioned, I wanna say the week after. But this same day, I actually went to um, lunch with Robin. So y'all know Robin, I connected with her um at one of the events that i went to um, i want to say a month before or a couple of weeks before she's also a stylist well she calls herself an image consultant and i had already been following her on linkedin but had never met her in person so this was a great opportunity for me to just kind of pick her brain although i hate saying that but y'all know what i mean ask her questions about her um you know journey and just learn more about her business and how she conducts business um, and she gave me a lot of great insight. I also found out that she knew one of my previous mentors, which was so funny. I was literally laughing in my head because <laughs> I, when I had originally mentioned her name to Robin, she was like, it sounds so, from her name sounds so familiar, but I'm just not really sure, you know, where I know her from. And then by the time we finished talking, she was reminded of who my ex-mentor was and she too also had like some weird vibes from her so it was just good to know that um that was confirmation for me to know that it just wasn't meant for me to you know my time was up with that woman and uh, my ex-mentor and it was no need for me to kind of it was no need for me to rekindle the flame with her or like reach out to her anymore because it was just no point um <laughs> but the story that robin told me was hilarious and obviously i'm not going to share the details 
but yeah so i'm just so thankful that i was able to connect with robin learn more about her story her journey ask her questions and just get inspired we are supposed to be having like a content day soon so i hope that she you know follows through with that because i would love to do that with her and also i'm thinking of having her become my mentor so we'll see i mean at this stage in my life although i would love a mentor I don't think that it is like super necessary. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm kind of my own mentor and God is also my mentor. <laughs> but other than that, it would be nice to have her as a mentor, but we'll see, you know, what happens um, and if that's meant to be. But we had a really nice lunch at some restaurant in um, Colombia. I can't remember the name of it, but it was a seafood restaurant, of course. So I got some seafood, which is my favorite. And we just had a really good time. So I'm thankful to have made that connection with Robin. Oh, and I forgot to mention, let's scroll it back. Let's scroll it back. May 6th. So the same day where I reached out to um, my manager, probably via Slack or like email to let her know that I was interested in moving forward with the full-time position. Literally y'all, as soon as I did that, I got a notification on my phone that a client had scheduled a style breakthrough session. I had no idea who the woman was, not really sure at that point in time where she found me, but that goes to show you that when you're obedient and you do the things that God is asking you to do, he always, always shows up and he always does more than what you could think, ever think or imagine. So I'm so thankful that I, that I didn't hesitate. Well, I did hesitate. But I'm so thankful that, you know, I didn't like second guess myself on moving forward with the full time position because, you know, God blessed me with a client and that woman did end up becoming a client. So, so thankful for that. And I'll talk about that in June. Or I may talk about it in this one. I can't remember everything that happened in May. But on May 8th, the next day, I actually met with Rachel. So Rachel is the founder of Drio and also in charge of the Women's Creative Alliance who put on that event where Robin was the speaker for. So y'all, keep up because everything is aligning. Everything is aligning. I met up with her, we actually just talked. Um, when we initially connected, she said she wanted me to do a lunch and learn. And um, she didn't give me a specific date, but she gave me a list of dates and I chose August. So that's coming up. Um, someone from her team actually reached out to me this week to confirm, you know, my topic that I'll be speaking about. So I'll be doing a lunch and learn on August 2nd with uh, the Women's Creative Alliance. But other than that, um, me and Rachel connected and I just wanted to learn more about her, her business and all the things. Um, I ended up becoming a member of the Women's Creative Alliance. So I'm now like getting emails from them, getting invited to their events, which me and my intern will actually be attending one of their events next week um, on July. 12th but aside from that it was great connecting with her and just learning more about her story and like what she does after that meeting I was able to get some work done for M.M. Lafleur, and I headed to a doctor's appointment this was an interesting <laughs> experience because it's so funny that when I was part-time in my business I pretty much got um benefits from the state so that's called Medicaid in Maryland so um I got benefits from the state and because I was part-time, I qualified. But um, I forgot that back in April, they told me to call back just to reapply for the benefits, the state benefits, and I forgot to do it. So my benefits from the state had basically lapsed and I no longer had benefits. So I'm walking into my doctor's appointment that I had this day and they checked my insurance and she said, oh, it looks like you don't have insurance. I'm like, huh? And then I thought about it and I'm like, oh, I never actually reapplied for Medicaid. She's like, oh, well just give them a call, see if they can, you know, set you up real quick. So stepped out of the doctor's office, called them, was on the phone way longer than what I expected trying to basically reapply when you reapply they ask you all these questions as far as like how much money you make and all the things and when i reapplied because i technically i was still well actually when i initially applied i was not working so i take that back when i initially applied i was not working but now at that point in time i was part-time and moving into full-time i didn't qualify for free Medicaid. 
So I did qualify for a credit towards my insurance or whatever, my benefits or whatever. So um, I'm like, okay, well, I ended up just rescheduling my doctor's appointment because at that point I had been on the phone with them for over 30 minutes and I basically missed my doctor's appointment. And if I were to have gone to my doctor's appointment that day, I would have probably had to have paid out of pocket and I wasn't trying to do that. So um, I rescheduled for a later date in June and because I knew that I was transitioning into full-time employment, I knew that my benefits would kick in at least by June 1st. So it worked out, but it was definitely like a frustrating process um, going through that because I had expected to just walk into my doctor's appointment and get seen and get my physical and all of that and that's not what happened. But yeah, also, I was able to get a wax that day, um, which was already pre-planned, already pre-scheduled. Um, I left my wax or came out of my wax to check out. And typically, I have a wax package. But for the past, like, maybe five or six months or so, I had been paying per month or paying every time I would get a wax. And I didn't really have a problem with that. Like, it wasn't a big deal. But they were having a sale again for their wax packages, which I love getting because it's basically like you go in and you don't have to pay anything um, every time you get wax, you just tip. So they were having their sale again and I didn't plan on like investing in that right away, but I just felt led to do it this time. So although I had to transfer money from my savings to pay for it initially, because I think initially they had charged me like $97 or $99 for the initial payment. And um, I still tipped on top of that, I think. But I was able to get in the package at a good deal and get six, I want to say six waxes um, basically within that package. So I had got home um, and I had got a call from European Wax Center saying like oh um i i forgot what she said that's what it was so the initial package that i was paying for actually included a brazilian that's why it was 97 dollars or like 99 dollars um for payments of that 97 dollars. so when she called me back she's like hey well you know initially we charged you for the brazilian but i noticed that you hadn't been getting that in your past waxes you were just getting like the bikini wax I'm like, yeah. So she's like, okay, well the package for the bikini wax is a little less than the Brazilian. Is that something you would prefer? I'm like, well, yeah, sure. So she's like, okay, well the payment would be $84 instead of the $97. I'm like, okay, bet. So she said, you know, I can refund you the amount or the difference now, or you can just use the difference towards your next payment. So that way your next payment can be less. Um, and I said, you know what, just keep the money. There's no need for you to refund it because by the time she was gonna refund it, it was gonna take a couple of days and it was just too much. But you could just, you already have it, just use that toward the next payment. So y'all, my payments went from $97, $99 to $84. And because that extra money um, was there from the first time, the second payment, I was charged like $64, y'all. So that shows you, you know, what God fav what God's favor looks like. Um, and it's just the smallest things that he really like, you know, uh, really shows you favor with if that makes sense. So it was a nice like little surprise and I was thankful for that little 15, not even gonna say little, cause no money is little, but I was thankful for that $15, you know, decrease in the payment so that I, it can go towards another payment. So it was a nice little surprise. Okay, so on May 9th, y'all, I had the style breakthrough session with the client that scheduled the same day that I was offered, basically offered, the full-time position or said yes to the full-time position at my job currently and it went so well y'all it went so well that she was excited and just sold and ready to move forward i'm so thankful that i'm confident enough in my value and like what i'm selling to have really really great sales calls with potential clients and actually convert them 
So it was a great call. She was excited to move forward and she became a client. Um, but at this point in time on May 9th, I was just praying that she would actually pay and move forward. Cause although I'm always sure that people move forward, sometimes in the back of my mind, I'm like, mm, you just never really know. Um, Cause sometimes I am very sure and the person doesn't move forward. So you never really know. I try not to get my hopes up too much, but I do try to remain confident. So I just wasn't sure. Um, but I was thankful that we had, that I had a great uh, style breakthrough session with her. And that same day I got approved for a ModSense blog post. Those blog posts now, the ones that I'm submitting are $100 a post. They used to be $40 a post. So it went up and I'm so thankful. And it's so funny because I was using AI. So using ChatGPT for my blog post, which was very helpful and really saved me a ton of time. But she, um, the, the person who runs the ModSense um, community where I submit the blog post, she basically was saying like, oh, well, we have a tool to know if you use AI, so do not use it. And it's just like, y'all, it's not that serious. Like, I just feel like if I use it, but I also spruce it up, which I always do in my own way, like, y'all would never know. And y'all, they didn't know because I spruced it up and, you know, I used AI, but I also used my own intellect as well. So it was fine and I got approved. So I was glad to know that it actually worked and I'm going to continue doing that for future blog posts as well. All right, y'all. So on May 10th, me and Jordan traveled to NYC for the weekend. It was just a random trip we wanted to take. We hadn't taken any trips as a couple the year this year so far so that was our first one and new york is an easy trip like it's right there um it's pretty reasonable for the most part i'm lying it's not that reasonable but it's an easy trip like so we took the bus we actually didn't drive the bus tickets were cheap so we took the bus and our bus was actually delayed y'all it was delayed but it worked out because there was some bus that came um that was that wasn't our bus. It was because our bus was delayed. Um, the bus that came before ours was also considered delayed, but the bus driver allowed us to get on that bus. So I'm so glad that we were able to because it was raining real bad. Um, we were already waiting outside for a long time and they just allowed us to get on the bus. So y'all, it was favor all over this trip and just this particular day. Um, so we got to the hotel, we were able to check in early. We were able to get a free upgrade. We got a balcony for our um, hotel. And honestly, y'all, this hotel was nice. Now I've had some experiences in New York where the hotels were like very tiny and trash, but this hotel was really, really nice. It was more than enough space for the both of us. Like we both had like little areas where we could sit and like have a desk. The bathroom was big. Like I told you there was a balcony. I had a nice TV in there. So it was just a really, really nice hotel. So I'm glad that I chose, we chose that hotel. Um, after we got changed and all of that, we ended up doing some shopping, we did some thrifting, and we went out to eat that night at a vegan restaurant, which was real good. And y'all, it was a black woman chef in there. The food was amazing. And it was so funny because we were the only black people in there. I didn't even realize that at first. But she, the chef apparently gave us a complimentary appetizer. So our um, waitress brought over some food that we didn't order. And she's as she's walking over and she comes to our table, I'm like, what's this? She's like, oh, it's a complimentary appetizer from the chef. I'm like, okay. And she was like, the waitress is like, she told me to tell y'all, period. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, hey chef. Like, it was cute, y'all. It was real cute. So um, the appetizer was good, as I don't know what. All the food was so good, y'all. If y'all have not had like vegan food before, definitely consider having vegan food. But if you tried vegan food and had a bad experience, definitely consider trying vegan food again. You just have to go to the right places, number one, and you have to make sure that whoever is making it, or even if it's you making it, you gotta season the food. Seasoning is like the whole premise of vegan, of good vegan food. Like, if you don't season it, it's not gonna taste like anything. So, season your food. 
try it again vegan food is better for you anyway so definitely try it I cannot remember the place of the restaurant but I will try to find it and put it down below but it was really good so if you're ever in New York definitely try that place um after that or oh, I just saw another place name I think I think it was called ABCV so ABC vegan so yeah I'll just pop it below anyway but after that we went back to um I want to say we went back to the hotel and changed our clothes again and then we went to this DJing party we were a little late it was in Brooklyn so we were maybe about 25 minutes away and we were supposed to um go to this party to meet up with one of Jordan's friends but he ended up not coming but I'm glad that we still went because it was a really good like DJing party um, so the DJ was really good. I don't know his name, but he was playing all the good songs, all the good mixes. Me and Jordan were able to get a seat like right in front. We both got a nice drink, so that was cool. By this time, y'all though, I was tired. So we have been traveling all day. We had basically been out all day, just enjoying the city. So I was like looking forward to going to sleep. So we went back to the hotel. We both fell asleep in the in the Uber, which I do not suggest doing when you're out of town in general anywhere, because you don't know what the Uber driver gonna do. But obviously, God protected us and we were fine. But um, we were both very tired. So uh, we went back to the hotel and went to sleep and then we woke up to the next day. So on May 11th, there was our second day in NYC and me and Jordan woke up early. And we went to brunch. We went to brunch at a vegan restaurant. Don't remember the name of it, sorry. But the food was so good. I had a coffee drink, which y'all know, if you know me, I love coffee. And it was like an espresso, like a lavender um, espresso martini, something like that. It was good, y'all. It was so good. And the food was so good. They were playing good music. It was really pretty in there. It was like so girly. And this was like Mother's Day weekend. Mother's Day was on that Sunday, the 12th. So everything was like Mother's Day themed. It was super cute in there. Me and Jordan really enjoyed it. Um, after we left there, we walked to get some drinks. We um, saw a few art galleries that he wanted to see. One of them was... Um, uh, they were both black artists. One of them was an artist who actually goes to my church. Um, I can't remember his name, but his work was really good. And then we went to another exhibit of a really famous black artist, um, Ernie Barnes. So he's the guy who did all the artwork that was seen on Good Times. Um, and a lot of like black people use his art, um, especially like music artists and like other people that do great things, <laughs> they use his art as well. Um, so he had an exhibit as well. So we went to go see that, which was really, really cool. Once we left there, of course, we did some shopping. I got my May perfume for the month. So y'all know I was keeping up with my monthly perfume hauls. So I, we were literally walking down the street and I spotted Barito. I said, oh, we going in there. So went into Barito, it smelled so good, loved everything. And I ended up getting like this three, like, travel size pack um i'm not gonna lie barrito is a little pricey it's a little pricey um it was like a hundred almost two hundred dollars for the three pack it was like 189 i'm like okay but they're small perfume i can't remember the ounce maybe like 1.7 but it could be a little bit bigger than that that is 225 the big one is like 300 something I said, yeah, you can just give me the little travel size. I really wasn't supposed to be spending any money, but it worked out because I got it all back. My potential client that I had a call with, the style breakthrough session with, um, I wanna say that Friday or the day before, she paid her invoice, y'all. That day, while we were out and about, while I was spending all my money, she paid her invoice. And I was so thankful, it was a nice little surprise. So, um, it was a really good day. Ended up being a really, really good day. I was also able to confirm um, the location for part two of the Style Evolution Workshop series, Style Therapy, which just recently happened last week. Um, and I was able to confirm the location, which was again, Illicit Rag Vintage 2.0. So Danny actually, I had called her, she's the owner of it. I had called her to um, ask her to use her space again. Um, and I hadn't heard back from her. She said she would call me back and just hadn't heard back. But literally y'all, on her due date, she was pregnant. 
so I gave her some grace like I know like when you're pregnant like you have pregnancy brain you forget a lot of things like it's a lot going on like a lot so she literally called me on her due date because she was like thinking through all the things that she needed to do before having the baby and obviously she didn't have her baby on the due date but she called me on her due date saying I knew I had to call you back um so I'm sorry it took me a long time but she's like, of course you can use the space again. So I was just so thankful that one, she remembered to call me back and two, she allowed me to use the space again for free. So y'all, like I said, it was a lot of favor all over this trip and I'm so thankful that we went. Okay, so on May 12th, it was Mother's Day. We traveled back from New York to home and I decided to go home because I wanted to give my mother her Mother's Day gift. I had ordered her a um, coach bag. So the same time I got my coach bag, I also ordered hers and I thought it was super cute. It was a really cute like navy blue tote bag, leather, pebble leather. So I was able to present her with her gift. I also gave her one of the um, tester scents that I got from Barito along with some hand cream and a card and I think something else. It was really nice to be able to give her a gift because a lot of the times, a lot of past like Mother's Days, I was not able to get her anything because I just couldn't afford it. I couldn't budget for it. So it was nice to be able to present her with a nice gift um, that she loved. I still haven't seen her carry the bag though. So yeah, but I'm thankful that I was able to give her that gift. Okay, so on May 13th, I actually received the deposit that I got from my client who paid in my account. So I was able to do all the things. I was able to prepare her welcome box, which all of my clients receive when they invest in my signature offer. And I usually go to like TJ Maxx or Marshalls and I conjure like a box of different things that um, that's personalized to the client and just like I do different themes for each box. So I was able to go to TJ Maxx and really put together a really, really nice box for her that included like lotion, body wash, um, um, some other things and a journal. I always make sure I include a journal in each welcome box because I want to encourage my clients to journal and write things down because literally it change, changes and is continuing to change my life. So journaling is everything. Also, um, I was, I went for a run. Um, also got a really cool idea for my business. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but it's an idea that isn't, you know, right for right now, but for later. But it's definitely been something that has been on my mind for a while. And I just feel like God, God, reminded, God reminded me about that idea, but in a different way. So it was just nice and I pray that he doesn't allow me to forget that idea but um, reiterates what that idea is when the time comes for me to really make it a thing. So I'm excited to really talk through that um, when it is time for me to present it to the world. So on May 14th, I was able to ship off my welcome box to my new client and y'all, it was only $13. Mind you, I had already like taped it up, had it in a box, all that good stuff. But still, $13. I don't remember ever paying that little bit for a welcome box, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And it reminds me that I actually need to purchase more welcome boxes for future clients. I believe I used my last one on that client, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm excited to get more clients. So I need to prepare so that when God send them, I'll be ready. But aside from that, it was $13 for me to ship that welcome box off and she absolutely loved it. Um, and I was thankful that it was like a reasonable price. I also had a call with Karee to finalize um, the virtual event um, that we were doing. So she has a business called um, the Blossoms Mentoring Circle or the Blossoming Mentoring Circle. And basically she invites mentors, which are different experts in different industries to speak to her group of women. And I was the first so in um on in June that's when I hosted it um with her group um and it was really really good y'all I talked about limiting beliefs I talked about um a bunch of different things that I'll talk more about in the June testimonial video but basically we just had a call to just finalize the details of it solidify a date 
um, and really just make sure that we were on the same page about the event. Okay, so on May 15th, um, I met up with Brianna, who is a mutual friend of mine, and she's a photographer. And I basically wanted to meet up with her because I was interested in creating an add-on for my signature service. So with Command Your Authority, I basically curate the, the whole premise behind that is to uplift and really help my clients to increase their confidence when it comes to their body and their mindset and their style, but also um, to curate a capsule wardrobe that aligns with the person that they are becoming. And with that, the, the I wanted to add a photo shoot on to that ending experience. So I wanted to talk to Brianna because she's a photographer and I wanted to curate like a collaborative like add-on so that when clients do move through that offer with me at the end, they're able to easily just do a photo shoot with either her or Elena, which is another photographer that I work with as well. So we talked about that. She let me know that she basically took a leap of faith in a full-time entrepreneurship. So I was super excited to hear that. I was just so encouraged to, I really just encouraged her and just motivated her to keep going and to let her know like, yo, it's, it's gonna be scary. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be challenging, but that's all a part of the process. So like, don't give up, you know, if you have any, if you have any questions, let me know, like I'm here for you, like all that good stuff. So I'm happy that what I'm doing is gonna help her to continue, you know, growing in her business. So we had a really, really good conversation and yeah. I also sent the calendar invite to Jaden Morgan to confirm the date for style therapy. Um, since I was able to speak to Danny and really confirm the location because that was really the biggest thing. I had reached out to Impact Hub to collaborate with them on this, but they hadn't gotten back to me yet. So I'm kind of glad that I was able to solidify um, illicit rag before they got back to me because it was just two last minutes to keep waiting on them at that point. Um, June was coming up and I really wanted to make sure that I had more than enough time to promote and prepare and prepare for style therapy but I did um, you know reach out to them still and was still waiting for them to get back to me. After that Jordan and I were able to go to the gym which like I told y'all I try to work out at least three to four times a week so that was one of the days of me working out. And then after that, we went out for pizza. So there was this vegan spot that was in Hamden or in Hamden is currently still there. Um, but me and Jordan had never noticed. Um, it's a pizza spot that actually has vegan pizza. So he wanted to try it. So we went there and it was really good, y'all. It was a really cool ambiance. Um, they were playing good music. It was BYOB. No, it wasn't BYOB. No, it was BYOB. So I think we brought a bottle of wine, if I'm not mistaken. Or I can't remember if we bought a bottle or if we if we brought a bottle with us or if we actually brought a bottle there. But we ended up getting a bottle of wine there with the pizza. And it was really good, y'all. Um, I think the place is called um, it's something like G Geno's or something. I can't remember what it's called, and I'm gonna put the the name of it here. But it's really good if you live in Baltimore and are familiar with the Hamden area. You definitely want to stop by there and get yourself some pizza, and it's fresh. It's real fresh. On May 17th, I officially received the offer letter from my job, y'all. So I was able to sign the letter. And it was so funny because my official first day, I now remember, was May 19th as a full-time stylist. So they were kind of taking their time with sending over the, the offer letter. And I was telling myself, like, if I don't get it, I ain't transitioning. But they sent it over that Friday before, so I was able to sign it and get it back to them and all that good stuff. And it basically broke down, like, the benefits, the pay, like, all all the hours and things like that. So I was glad that I was able to receive that. Um, that night, we actually celebrated my sister's husband, my brother-in-law, Greg, his birthday. So they're both the same age, um, which is so funny to me. Me and Jordan are also the same age and my parents are also basically the same age. They're only like a month apart. But we went to Stratosphere Social, which is basically like a Dave & Buster's or main event. Um, it's out Eldersburg, if you're familiar with Baltimore County. That was my first time going and it was super cute we bowled my sister had got like um got us food and drinks and stuff we played games so i played games with my nephews and um it was just a really really cute time i was also able to record my april testimonial apparently on this day so i'm thankful that i was able to get that out um and it's obviously out now so you can watch all the testimonial videos but yeah it was a good day. So on May 18th, me and my mother attended a woman's tea at my church. 
So y'all, I had no idea my church was even doing this. My mother brought it to my attention. So when she did, I'm like, okay, this is cute. I had been wanting to go to a tea and dress up because I had never done that before. So I had ordered this real cute dress off ASOS. And I had ordered like a little thing, the little, um, what is it called? A fascinator from Amazon. So I got those, I had my shoes, I had my bag. I got so many compliments on that dress, y'all. Y'all know I love compliments. But um, it was a great time. It was at my church. The room was full of women. Everybody dressed up. Everybody looked so cute. And the topic was mentality. We talked about a few different things. Um, the seven fruits of Mary's mentality. And it was funny because our table was table seven. And our word on our table was mentality. So it just all aligned and it was super cute. Um, with how it turned out. We took some pictures and I basically um, did like a little recap post on Instagram. So it was just a really cute time. Um, and it was nice to be able to spend some time with my mother and do something like that together with her because I've never done anything like that with her before. So. so once I got back, I was super tired because the tea was in the morning. We had to be there at like 8.30, I wanna say. So I was able to come back and rest and relax. And then that evening, I spent it with my sister, my nieces, my nephew, my brother-in-law, um, which I always love spending time with them. So it was a nice, a nice day. Okay, so on May 19th, me and Jordan woke up and decided to go to the farmer's market. So if you're from Baltimore, then you know the farmer's market happens every Sunday from I think 8 to 12, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. under the bridge, under 83. So we went to the farmer's market and we saw my uncle and aunt there, which was random. <laughs> my uncle walked up on us and I'm like, what in the world are you doing here? But literally everybody goes to the farmer's market. So I was not surprised that we seen him. But we basically got a few things. They did not have a vegan food option this time so we ended up just going back home and making acai bowls we've been making those for breakfast and they're really really good it's been Jordan who's been making them so they've been really good um and then I had to work I had a meeting with one of my co-workers who was new and she wanted some insight on um how to style how to curate bento boxes and all of those things so i helped her with that um we talked through like her styling experiences and it was just really nice um to also connect with another fellow stylist and just learn about what she's experienced what she's been through and all those things and y'all know i love coaching and live teaching so um i had the opportunity to really teach her and coach her on what styling looks like for emma mcfleur um, after that, we ended up going to the Juke. So that is the um, day party that Black Ass Flea Market puts on. Um, typically like once a month, they were having it. I don't know if they're having one anytime soon, but it was nice because the weather was nice. Um, I had a cute outfit that I had on. And of course we got a drink. Um, their drinks be so strong. So I'm glad that I had the self-discipline <laughs> and the self-control to just get one drink. Um, and that was that. So we had a good time. After that, I ended up going to Target so I could pick up a few things. And then we went home because your girl was tired from being up all day. So it ended up being a long day, but it was a good day. All right, y'all. So um, on May 20th, we started a 30-day fast with Increase 365. So this 30-day fast literally came out of nowhere. So with this fast, we were basically fasting from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So I was available or, you know, had the ability to eat all day and then I had to stop eating at 6. Which you think that sounds pretty easy, but it was honestly harder than all the other fasts that we've ever done. We were also fasting from sweets. We were also fasting from secular music. And we were also fasting from TV, y'all. Although I don't watch a lot of TV, I do indulge in TV every once in a while when I wanna relax. So it was hard. It was also kinda hard um, fasting from secular music because of course when you're out and about, like you hear music, uh, when other people are driving, you hear their music. When you go to events, you hear music. You really can't control that. So, I mean, I still was out and about and I was still hearing other music, but I specifically, with when I played my own music and also when I was in the car with Jordan, he participated with me and he, you know, only played gospel music. So, it wasn't too, too bad with the music thing. The TV was a little challenging and the sweets, obviously. I'm not, I love sweets, but I can, I'm good. Like, I'm definitely a savory kind of girl. 
So like it wasn't too hard for the sweets. But the eating from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., that was hard as I don't know what. And for 30 days, y'all, Monday through Friday and Saturday through Sunday, it was hard. But so much has come out of that fast, so much growth, so many great things have come out of that fast and it ended on June 18th. Today is July 3rd, so I am doing another fast, obviously we fast every month and now weekly, but like that one, that one was hard. So initially I wasn't going to partake, I was not going to partake in that fast, but I, um, I'm glad that I did. And I say that to say because I had finally got an opportunity to give my insurance a call because for some reason I had got sent a bill from the GYN saying that I owed some money for my um, my gynecologist appointment. But when I called, come to find out, it was paid in full. It was paid in full. So God already started off <laughs> like doing doing his thing. So that motivated me to actually say like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and partake in this fast because obviously that was confirmation that I need to be a part of this. This was also the first day of me transitioning into full time in my uh, job. So that was also a blessing that was provided by God. So I feel like me or I felt like me participating in this fast was just my way of saying thank you to him um for that for everything that he was doing so it was just a really cool experience and also i noticed that two of my old co-workers from Brew la now got hired at mm my um old co-worker lisa who was actually my manager at mm i mean ma my manager at Brew la and then daisha who was my co-worker at Brew la so Lisa had um, slacked me like, hey, um, I see that you work here. Like, oh my gosh. I'm like, Lisa? <laughs> it was just so funny. So they're literally my coworkers now. So how crazy is that? So we had a meet and greet. And then I ended the night, me and Jordan played like this question game. Since he knows that I wasn't able to watch TV, he really like, you know, did his thing with helping me get through the 30 day fast. So I really appreciate him for that. So on May 21st, I worked from Jordan's house and it was a pretty busy day. Um, just a normal day. We went for a run. Um, I made lunch, all the, all the things. And I tuned into the live prayer session for the fast. Um, I was actually supposed to go to an event that Rhea invited me to, but I told her I was no longer available because I really needed to get some work done. And it was just not a super productive day as I wanted it to be. So I ended up not going. But Jade actually picked up a body butter for me from Trader Joe's. So she had been wanting this body butter from Trader Joe's that apparently is a dupe for the Balm Dia Bright Cream or one of the uh, Sol de Janeiro scents. So um, we did that uh, or I got the body butter from her and um, it smelled really good. Um, and then when I got to her house, I realized that Jordan had never fixed my tail light like I had asked him to. So I went back to his house to help so that he could fix my tail light and come to find out it had nothing to do with my tail light. It was something else that was wrong with my car. So I haven't actually gotten it fixed just yet. So obviously I'm, my car is fine, I guess. But yeah, I still need to, it's still some things I need to get fixed in my car that I'm trying to cross, up the, cross off the to-do list this month. So we'll see how that goes. So on May 22nd, I had my style transformation consultation with my new client, Kishana. And it went really, really well, y'all. She extremely like, she is a really, really great client. Um, it was great to work with her at this point. Like we're kind of coming up on time with working together. But aside from that, she was a great person to work with. She loved everything that I was doing for her. And we obviously went over time for, for, the, uh, for the consultation because she had so many questions and I had so many things to like learn about her. So it was a really, really good experience. Um, and I was just excited to like style her and just start, you know, taking her through the process of, you know, working with her. Um, I had a lot to do that day, so I just continued working through my to-do list. Um, I had a client who spent over 2K at MM, so that was nice because that's a nice commission. I wanna say she kept everything, but I really can't remember. Um, I was able to do um, go to Target and pick up a few things. I tuned into the live session that Raven hosted um, for the fast, and she encouraged us to repent before revenue. 
Um, so basically, you know, repenting about worrying about money, repenting um, for fearing that we would never have money or never have enough, or just repenting for not believing that God would provide for us financially. So that night I did that um, and I'm continuing to do that. Um, and I've just been so much better, like I mentioned earlier in this video about my mental health and like my mindset when it comes to my finances. I've definitely come a long way. So I'm just so thankful to be a part of Increase 365 and just so thankful that all the growth that I've had from being in this group um, because Raven has definitely encouraged us to lean on God and not lean on what we see um, and not focus and put too much energy into our bank accounts and into our jobs and into clients but focus on God and just know that he will always provide for us so I'm so thankful to like be in this space mentally when it comes to my finances because it's been a challenge has definitely been a challenge. So on May 24th, I had woke up to do my journaling and my morning routine and I clocked into work like any other normal day. Um, I had my, for some reason, I had my availability closed. So with this transition from part-time to full-time, I was a little confused on like what my availability was gonna look like. Typically, as a full-time stylist, full-time, 40 hours, I assume that, you know, I'm working every day, Monday through Friday. But the way that this job is set up, which I kind of like, is it's just 40 hours a week. So your 40 hours a week can look like Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like, it's not like every day. And I didn't fully understand that at first until after the fact. So I had um, spoke to my manager about it and apparently I had already reached my 40 hours for that week. So I was actually basically off um, uh, yesterday technically and today. So because I had worked yesterday, I mean, my hours were still accounted for, but I had basically just clocked in for this day for a couple of hours just to do some work. And then I clocked out and had the rest of the day to kind of do my own thing, which I was thankful for because I had a few things that I need to focus on, that I needed to focus on. So I ran some errands. Um, I was helping a uh, helping the founder of MM with a friend of hers who was a client and she chose me to like do the bento and all of the things but it was a lot of like confusion and a lot of like frustration that came out of that situation and I didn't it kind of like threw me for a loop um because it was a part of it was kind of out of my control and I just felt felt like the communication was like trash um, and it kind of made the experience for the client a little wonky. So I was talking to Jordan about it and like he just motivated me and just, you know, encouraged me. And he also sent me money for lunch that day. So I was able to, since I was off at that point in time, I was able to go and treat myself to lunch or he was able to treat me to lunch, but I took myself off to lunch. Um, and then I ran some errands. So I kind of like put it in the back of my mind and just left it alone for that day since I was no longer working that day. So that was a really nice treat that was unexpected. I was also able to, you know, really work on some personal things for my business since I basically had the rest of the day to kind of chill. And I also felt led to ask my sister if she wanted me to help her start cleaning out her closet. So y'all, yeah, she had been asking for me to clean out her closet for a while. And I just haven't really had the time to do it or just like the I wasn't really prioritizing it. And neither was she. Like she had asked me a couple of times and then just like forgot about it. So I felt led to like ask her like, hey, so you want me to clean out your closet now? Like I'm free. I'm actually free this evening. She's like, oh, okay, cool. So um, I went over her house to start that process. Mind you, I've cleaned out her closet once before. She has a huge walk-in closet and she's been living in the house that she's living in for about four years now since the pandemic. That's when they moved in. And when she initially moved in, I helped her like, you know, do her closet and all the things. But since then, she's purchased a lot more. She's had two more kids and her body has changed. So she just has a lot more clothes in there. And it was a lot. When I say a lot, I'm not like, it's really a lot. She literally has sat from sizes four all the way up into 14 in her closet, y'all. It's ridiculous. 
So um, I knew that this would just be day one of me helping her clean out her closet and I knew I would have to come back a couple of more times. So, um, you know, I, I started that day and it was nice. It was nice because I was able to spend time with her. I was able to spend time with my nieces and nephews, but also like help her like clean out her closet, which was cool. That morning, I had also woke up to $100 at my PayPal account from the ModSense blog post that I told y'all that I had um, submitted and got accepted and approved for. So that was a nice thing to wake up to as well. So all in all, it was a great day. So that was actually May 23rd. Now we're gonna move on to May 24th. So on May 24th, it was a Friday and y'all know, Friday is payday and it was commission day too. So um, when I checked my account that morning, I got paid and I also got my commission check. But my commission check was a little lower than what I was expecting. Um, usually the HR, the woman that's a part of HR, she usually sends like a breakdown of the commission that we had received that month. But she didn't that, that week or that month. So I had reached out to her just to confirm. Typically, they're usually right about the commission that we get, but I always like to just see like, okay, how much was it versus how much I got? Because of course, commission is taxed and it's taxed a lot more than our typical like checks. So my commission was way lower than I had expected, but I was still very thankful because I was able to pay my entire student loan in full and I was able to pay um, just a lot of bills that I had for the month. So I was thankful for that. Um, but. I was able to also, um, but I was also able to have an appointment with a client and um, she shopped and I can't remember how much she spent, but obviously she shopped a decent amount if I wrote it down. <laughs> but um, that day was actually the weekend before I wanna say Memorial Day. So I ended work early and me and Jordan went out to DC to go to a vegan restaurant for lunch. It was real good. The food was really good. It's a place called Planta. They actually are a chain and each restaurant sells different foods, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's a vegan restaurant and the food was good. Um, I couldn't indulge in a drink because of the fast, but I was able to eat and enjoy the food. And after that, we walked to the grand opening of one of Jordan's clients franchisees for this place called Pure Green. I believe that's what it's called. So they sell like um, fresh juices and smoothies and acai bowls and little shots too, the sh uh, juice shots. So Jordan and I um, got, I wanna say six juices each cause they had like a promo going on. So that was nice. So we were able to support her and the drinks were really good. We actually have a pure green here that I have not yet been able to explore yet, but I definitely want to go by there very soon. Um, because their juices were really, really good. So I wanna get more of that. But of course it wouldn't be me and Jordan if we did not argue. Now, I know we're getting better with arguing. Typically, I feel like we just have a ton of disagreements and we just don't always see eye to eye, which is normal. Like that's normal for normal couples. But it's just a matter of how we communicate about di disagreeing, which is not the best. And nine times out of 10, it's usually me. And I know that, I'm acknowledging that. I know the type of person that I am, he knows who I am, like we get it, and I'm working through it. I'm becoming a better me, and it's fine. But we argued a couple of times over a few things, but one of them that stood out to me the most was me paying for parking. So y'all know that I'm coming out of a space where I am worrying about money, um, fearing that I won't have any money, and just you know having my financial challenges so i had offered to pay for parking and y'all know dc parking is oh freaking d so we had initially found a spot on the street and i had i just felt led to pay for parking so i had um we found a spot on the street and i was gonna pay but then i saw jordan realize like oh i don't think we can park here cool so we moved to another spot on the street and read the signs and it seemed to be okay. So then I went ahead and paid for parking. It was a meter. And after I paid, we realized that we couldn't park there. So I'm like, okay, I was moving too fast. Like I should have chilled, but it was fine. It was like $5, I think. So it wasn't like OD. 
So we moved the car again. So we kind of argued about whether we should park on the street versus the garage. We ended up parking in the garage. Of course, we had a great lunch. We did. We went to the juice place and then when we were leaving, um, he looked at me to pay for parking in the garage. So I had initially had like a set amount on my cash app account that I was gonna use to pay for parking. But I had forgot that some of that money was used on the spot, that meter that we actually didn't park at. So um, when it came to paying, parking I think was like $20. But I had only had $15 left on my cash app card. So I'm looking at him like, I don't have enough money on my cash app card. I wanted to use my cash app card. I don't wanna use any other card. So he was kind of like upset because he ended up having to pay for parking and he treated me for lunch. Like y'all, I was just doing too much. I was just being like really fearful at that point. And I had just got paid that day too. And I was still being very like, just stingy with my money. And I don't know what was happening there, but I'm glad that I acknowledged it. And I'm glad that I was able to kind of nip it in the bud. I apologized. I ended up cashing at pimp, cashing at. I ended up cash apping him the $15 that I had left on my cash app card. So basically he only ended up paying $5 for parking. But, and then I forgot, I did end up, <laughs> I did end up selling him $5. So initially he got his money back for parking, but it just didn't have to go that way. So, you know, I apologized to him about it and I repented of course, but it was just, I don't know what was going through my mind, but obviously, yeah it was a lot but i'm thankful that he still loves me regardless and like he understands that i'm growing from my old ways so yeah but all in all it was still a great day and a great experience to try the vegan restaurant so on may 25th um me and jess re-recorded the episode for our stylist rant podcast the first episode we recorded um I think I ran out of storage or something because my zoom cut off so we did it through hers and apparently like the footage got lost child I don't know so we re-recorded episode one which went really well honestly I think it went way better than the first one so I'm kind of glad it worked out that way um and she really enjoyed it too but also um I had basically reached my 40 hours for the week. I just needed a few more hours to work. So I basically used like two or three hours to work and finish out my work day. So I was thankful I didn't have to work a full day. Um, I watched a really good sermon called Fresh Failure from Mike Todd. I watched Transformation Church Faithfully. And it was just a really good sermon just to confirm that, you know, failure is inevitable, but it's also a part of the process and we're supposed to fail. Like it's good for us to fail. And it, I understood this concept of failing like a couple of years ago. I really like fully understood it and you know what it was and what it meant. But and now I'm at a space where I'm like, okay, I know failure is gonna happen. Like I'm not afraid of that anymore, but I used to be. So for those of you who are afraid to fail, I feel like I talk about this often, but failure is inevitable, it's gonna happen. We're supposed to fail. Failing makes us better. Failing gives us an opportunity to learn from our mistakes and failing also positions us in the right direction that we're supposed to go. So if you're in the process or if you're going through the motions of just failing or feeling like you're failing, just know that you are doing the right thing and this is all a part of God's plan for you. So that's basically what that sermon was about and I was thankful to watch that and just be reiterated um, about the fact that failing is a part of the journey. Um, we also, um, after eating and like packing my bags, I was at home. So I made my way to Jordan's. Um, we went to the grocery store and picked up a few things because we were going to a wine festival. So I know, I said I was fasting. I was in a 30 day fast, was not supposed to be drinking. Although that wasn't a part of the like fasting instructions. Technically, you're not supposed to drink when you're fasting. Um, but because we had already pre-planned this wine festival, I um, still was gonna indulge. I just knew that I wasn't gonna be like 
tipsy or anything like that. So I still enjoyed, I still enjoyed my wine. Um, do not get me wrong, I was excited. And we had a real good time at the wine festival, so I'm glad I still went. It was already prepaid for, so I wasn't about to like not go. Um, but I really am glad that I still went and I enjoyed my time and I was able to control myself and like really like not do too much. Um, and it was because of the fast, like I'm so thankful for that. So, um, but uh, before all of that happened, we basically like this day, on this day, we basically prepared for the wine festival. We picked up some groceries, some cups, some plates, like all the things that we needed. Cause it was a type of wine festival where you could bring stuff in. So that's what we did. And then that night we went to Tone's going away party. So she hosted a going away bowling party. She actually got an internship for Kohl's um, for 10 weeks this summer in Milwaukee. So um, that was her going away party for that. And I'm glad I was able to attend because I hadn't seen her for a while. And it felt good to, you know, just spend some time with her, um, enjoy. We didn't went bowling. And um, that was my second time going bowling for the month. And I'm not really a bowler, but we had a good time. Um, I didn't drink, but, and I couldn't eat because it was after six, but me and Jordan came, we saw a few people that we knew and we just chilled and like spent time with Tone. So it was a good time. Um, I'm very thankful that she has this internship and just this whole like journey that she's on right now. I love it and I really, really support it. So um, I was also able to sew into her cause she's going to Ghana y'all. She's going to Ghana. I want to say in December, I'm trying to go with her but we'll see um but she um is was raising money for the trip so she sent me her link to sew into her so i was able to sew into her so that felt good so on may 26 we went to the wine festival like i said it was a good time it was super duper hot but we still had a good time and i'm glad that i was able to go i did not do too much with the drinking i was good i did not get drunk and i didn't smoke y'all so I like weed, I smoke. I don't smoke every day, I don't smoke all the time, but it is something that I indulge in every once in a while. And of course they were passing it around and I said, no, I'm good, you know. So I was able to not indulge in that. So I was thankful for that. I was also on my period this day and I'm so glad that it didn't like bother me too much. Cause usually when I'm on my period, like the first two days, I'm in pain. But I wasn't in too much pain this day. Um, but it was a little uncomfortable being in the heat and on my period because they had porta potties out there, which at first were pretty clean. But as the day went on, they got worse and worse. So I really used the bathroom too much. I think I used the bathroom maybe like two or three times out the entire day. But I was literally sitting the entire time. Um, I had on my box, my uh, I was about to say boxer shorts. I had on my biker shorts and my black dress. So I was good. But yeah, it did get a little uncomfortable after a while. And I was a little irritated because y'all know I, you know, am not technically, wasn't technically supposed to be drinking on the fast. So I had brought my water bottle with a bunch of water in it and it was ice cold. I was gonna have it out there cause it was super hot. And apparently you can't bring water in the wine festival. I couldn't bring the water in. So I literally had to pour my entire 40 ounces of water out in the trash can. I was, y'all, <laughs> I was over it. I was already in my period. I wanted my water, it was hot. Like, thankfully Zach had brought water so I was able to like kind of refill my water bottle a bit, not to the brim and it wasn't super cold, but yeah. So that was annoying. But other than that, it was such a good time, y'all. And towards the end of the wine festival, Nia and Chris, our friends, had announced that they had gotten engaged. So we were all like clapping all loud. Everybody was looking at us like we were crazy because they was trying to figure out what was going on. Whole time, Nia and Chris had got engaged. And it was so crazy because I didn't see no ring on her finger or I really wasn't even paying attention at first. So that's why I didn't see any ring on her finger. But when she said it and showed us, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know noticed you were wearing a wedding ring or like a wedding band so it was so cute so congrats to Nia and Chris for getting engaged oh and then I talked about sewing into Tone for her trip so it was a cool day 
so on may 27th jordan and i basically chilled all day i think it was raining this day so it really wasn't like anything going on this was on labor day like the official holiday um i believe labor day came first I'm, i think memorial day is in august so i think it's labor day i don't know why i always get them confused y'all but if i'm wrong i'm wrong whatever but the holiday was on that monday and we basically worked and chilled i think we went to we worked out so i want to say we went to the gym as well um yeah we went to the gym and i was able to like get a decent amount of work done i was able to prepare for the week i had basically invested in sam cart again so that is the platform that i use to um create landing pages for different things that i offer so i was able to invest in sam cart and i was able to create the landing page for my mentorship program because that was going live on um or the application i'm sorry was going live on that saturday i want to say and then I was also able to um, prepare the landing page for the upcoming workshop. And that was going live. Tickets for that was going live um, that week as well. So it was a lot of things that I was preparing for and just releasing. So it was a productive day that I was able to like just get things done. So on May 28th, y'all, I actually met up with the stylist. Um, so Tiffany Styles by Tip she um invited me to her networking event i want to say back in may if i'm not mistaken but i was unable to attend well obviously i'm saying back in may so i think it may have been april or earlier in may and i was able to i was i wasn't able to attend so i have reached out to her to you know say hey girl i know i wasn't able to attend your networking event but let's connect over like brunch or lunch or something so she was all for it. So this day I basically met up with her at Easy Lunch like Sunday, which is a lunch brunch spot or breakfast lunch brunch spot here in Baltimore. So which is very close to where Jordan lives. So it worked out um, and she loved the food. I love the food and we just had a really great time talking. I learned more about her business. I learned more about her journey. She had only, she had only been styling for three years, which is crazy because she just comes off as if she's been doing it for such a long time or at least i assumed that she was going off of like you know her social media presence but she had only been styling for three years y'all so i loved it um i love talking about different experiences with styling and just being able to relate to other stylists so i was able to like encourage her and like give her some ideas on how she can uh, run her business and like different strategies that she can use because she was really like just telling me about some of the challenges that she was having and it reminded me a little of the a lot of the things that i experienced while growing my business so i'm like oh girl i wasn't saying this but in my mind i'm thinking like oh yeah i remember that oh, oh yeah i experienced that this is what i did to get out of it so it was very nice to be able to like help her with that and i pray that she is able to like get the clarity that she needs to really um you know run her business in a way that makes sense for her and her audience and her clients because how she was explaining it to me she was saying one client she was basically working with for six months i said six months what for what like how how did that even happen but i do understand like sometimes when you're working with people sometimes you just lose track of time or you know you just allow time to get away from you but I was encouraging her to like really set boundaries in her business and really make sure that she doesn't give her clients no more time than what they need because that's how people take advantage of you. Um, and it's no way she you, you should be working with a styling client, at least in the way that we work with clients. It's no way that you should be working with styling clients for six months. Like at that point, you had already made your money and you're probably wasting money still working with that same client knowing that you could be working with someone new. So. I tried to explain that to her so hopefully she understood it and she got it but you know everybody's different um it also gave me the reassurance that you know this is why i started the mentorship program for stylists for situations like this like when you're going through things as a stylist and you're not really sure like what direction to go into or what decision to make you can have a mentor and you can have someone who's experienced what you've experienced to kind of give you some more guidance and like direction because sometimes it is hard to make those decisions on your own because you just don't know so it definitely gave me some reassurance for that. 
Um, I also that evening was able to go back to my sister's house to help her with cleaning out her closet. I think it was like day two or day three at this point. So yeah. So on May 29th, we're getting close into the end of May, y'all. Um, Miss Nina, she actually canceled her shopping trip. So she had planned a shopping trip for June 22nd and I had paid her my deposit and I had got two of my friends to pay her too. And she had reached out to me saying that she had decided to cancel it because she just had a lot going on and she just didn't have the capacity to run it. So she ended up refunding um, me, Rhea, and Jade are all of our deposits for the trip. And I was a little sad about it because I was looking forward to shopping for the summer because I needed new clothes. But I was also like content with it too because a lot was going on in June. And I'm glad that, you know, it didn't happen because I ended up doing something else on the 22nd. So it all worked out, but I was a little upset about it. Um, I also released the flyer and the landing page for my workshop. So Jordan sent over the um, flyer for the workshop. He is a graphic designer, if y'all didn't already know. I'm very thankful for that because he was able to create the flyer for me and he has been doing that for all of my workshops. So, um, you know, he sent over the flyer. I thought it looked great and I was able to release the landing page for the workshop. So I was very thankful that I was now a step closer to hosting style therapy. I was also able to confirm the benefits for my job. So my dad actually works in um, health insurance and he's been working in health insurance for years. So he has a lot of knowledge when it comes to like Medicaid and health insurance and benefits. So um, he actually helped me to pick out my benefits and I'm so thankful because it can get really confusing um you know working um and trying to figure out like what benefits are the best ones for you so he kind of like put a lot of things into perspective for me after walking through all of the options so i'm thankful that i was able to choose my benefits because y'all know that i had rescheduled my doctor's appointment for like i think the second week in june i literally had it last week um so I needed my benefits to in order to have my doctor's appointment. So I'm glad I was able to submit that before the deadline um, of June. And then that evening I spent at my sister's again, helping her cleanse her wardrobe. And we were making progress. I was actually able to see the floor this time. <laughs> so we were making a lot of progress and I just pray. I pray and I hope y'all pray that she feels led to get rid of things because she has way too many clothes y'all and i usually don't say that like i usually say like you can never have too many clothes but she actually has way too many and most of the clothes she cannot even fit so it's definitely like just a waste of clothes and a waste of space that could be utilized in a better way so i just pray please pray for her that she is encouraged to get rid of things that she no longer can fit and no longer suits her lifestyle on May 30th, I did some work um, and I decided to go for a run. It was a really nice day out that day, so the weather was perfect and I was able to run three laps without stopping, y'all. So that's an accomplishment for me. Um, while I was in the, well, once I finished running, I actually had a meeting for work, so I had that. And then once I left there, I went to go get a smoothie because I just really wanted a smoothie. Um, I love tropical smoothie smoothies and it was just the perfect day to get a smoothie. But on my way there, I actually saw an accident. So I didn't see it happen, but I actually saw like the aftermath of it. And it was just so funny because the night before leaving my sister's house, I saw an accident as well. And kind of like the, on the same street. So it just reminded me how God protects me and protects my loved ones. Because if I would have left the park any sooner, I probably would have been a part of that accident. If not, you know... Uh, I would have seen it happen in real time. So I'm just thankful that, you know, God continues to protect me, my family, my friends, the people that I'm connected to, and um, just keeps us safe. So I'm thankful for that. But I was able to get my smoothie. I was able to come back home and conduct a few um, styling appointments. I was also able to tune in to the live session for the fast. And Raven and Candace were actually hosting a workshop called Conference Queens, um, which basically helped um, women entrepreneurs learn how to host their own events, which y'all know at that point in time, I was in the process of promoting and like raising money to um, 
or selling tickets for the style therapy workshop. And I've hosted events, I've been hosting events since 2017, so I'm not new to hosting events, but I am new in the space of the type of events that I'm hosting now, which are more so intimate workshops. And I took a break in 2019 um, from hosting, or took a break in 2020 from hosting events, and um, had been taking a break since up until this year. So March was my first event since 2020, y'all. So. It was very like nerve wracking. I was nervous. I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, although I'm good with like logistics and like the behind the scenes stuff, it was still a lot um, leading up to the part one and now part two. Um, so I figured, you know, investing or attending this uh, free Conference Queens workshop would be helpful to me. And of course, at the end, they had an upsell. So they were hosting an accelerator called Conference Queens, um, which is happening this month, July 16th and 17th, which I'm excited for. And thankfully enough, I was able to invest um, a deposit into the accelerator program. Um, so I'm looking forward to like learning all the things that they're gonna be teaching us when it comes to hosting these events, because I want my events to get quote unquote bigger and better. Although I don't want it to be, I want, I love my events being intimate. I don't want like a ton of people at my events anymore. Um, but I do want to like elevate my events, the location, the decorations, um, get the right people in the room, like sell out the, you know, small amount of tickets that I had for sale. So it's definitely a lot that I'm looking forward to learning from Conference Queens, the accelerator. So I'm excited um, to talk about that in the July testimonial video when it happens. Okay, y'all. So last but not least, May 31st. So on this day, I had a really great style shift session with Keyshawna, my client, and I could tell that she was really enjoying like working with me and really enjoying the experience, which made me feel really, really good. Um, and I also enjoyed working, enjoy working with her. She just is very trustworthy. Like she trusts me. She allows me to lead and just like allows me to be the expert that I am. So I really, really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to working with more clients like that throughout 2024. I also had to reorder two tops that I got from, um, the Target drop for, uh, Janae Naylor. So her collection dropped in June, collection one, and it was super cute. I got a couple of things and um, I was thankful that the two tops that I got, I actually needed to get a size up in one of them and then a size, actually a size up in both of them. Um, so I had ordered an extra small in one and then a small in an up in the other. But I didn't really like how they fit. So I went back on the website really quick. Thankfully they were still available because her stuff was selling out so fast. So I was able to reorder one of the tops in a medium and another top in a small. So I had finally got the new sizes and I ended up keeping the original extra small because it fit way better than the small in one top. And then I ended up um, getting the medium and keeping the medium in the other top. So I'm glad I was able to like exchange that and figure that out because like I said, her stuff was selling fast. I was also able to watch day 11 of the 30 day fast that Raven was doing, the live sessions. And this particular day, Tim, her husband was conducting the session. And it was a really, really good session. He talked about kingdom laws and just, you know, how we as people and as believers, we sin and some of the things that we do and how it affects like our well-being and how we basically just have to accept the consequences when we sin. So just being mindful of like the, the things that we're doing. So I had a really hard conversation with Jordan about a decision that I decided to make and we've tried making this decision before, but it was very hard. Um, and obviously we went back to <laughs> um, doing what we were doing before, but this time was different. Um, and I'm so thankful that, you know, he was able to understand and he was able to, you know, just really digest it a lot better. And although it's gonna be a little challenging for the both of us, I'm glad that, you know, we have come to a conclusion that we're able to just, you know, make this decision and keep moving in the right direction until we decide to take the next step. So 
I was very encouraged by that live session that Tim did and it really just made me rethink through some things. So I'm glad that I was able, I'm glad that I was able to watch it and really just take from it what I needed to take from it. So that's it y'all. We have officially finished May, the testimonial video. I still have to record June, so stay tuned for that. But I'm just glad that I was able to get through this. I know I'm a little behind time, but it's quite all right. I hope y'all enjoyed this testimonial video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and listening and tuning in. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.